It's Tuesday, December 2nd here in Seoul. I'm Na Hyun Kyung, and these are the stories in the headlines at this hour. A trawler operated by one of Korea's biggest deep sea fishing companies sinks in waters off Russia's coast. Eight have been rescued so far, but one person is dead, and more than 50 are still missing. U.S. President Barack Obama vows to reform policy in light of recent events in Ferguson, Missouri. Meanwhile, the National Football League says it will not punish a group of players for showing support for the protesters. And Sony Pictures says its system was hacked and scenes from the soon-to-be-released film The Interview have been leaked online. There is speculation that North Korea may be behind this attack. Now, starting with the sunken trawler, 52 crewmen are still missing after a Korean-operated vessel went down in the Bering Sea off Russia's far eastern coast on Monday. There was no good news from overnight rescue operations. Only eight have been rescued, with one already confirmed dead. Park ji has the latest. Korea's foreign ministry said Tuesday morning that no more people had been rescued overnight. Around the time of the sinking on Monday afternoon local time, eight people on a small life raft were rescued by a nearby ship, one Russian, three Filipinos, three Indonesians and one Korean. But the Korean crewman later died of hypothermia. Officials say the crew of the Orion 501 was made up of 35 Indonesians, 13 Filipinos, 11 Koreans and one Russian. 52 people are still missing. Rescue operations are said to be ongoing, but weather and water conditions are making search efforts very difficult. The owner of the trawler, Sajo Industries, says that while the exact cause of the sinking is not yet known, it's believed that the boat began to list sharply after high winds and choppy waters caused the seawater to flood its storage holes. The boat, built in 1978, was bought by Sajo Industries from a Spanish company in 2010. Industry experts say vessels that have been operation for more than 20 years are at greater risk of sinking than newer ones. The Orion 501 left Korea's southern port city of Busan in July to fish for Pollock in the Bering Sea. The boat was scheduled to return to Busan this month. Park ji Arirang News. U.S. President Barack Obama is showing a strong commitment to bridge the divide between police and the African-American community in the U.S. amid the fallout from racially charged protests in Ferguson, Missouri. He says it's going to be different this time because he is deeply invested in making sure it is. Our Lee ji has more. Inside the White House on Monday, President Barack Obama held a series of meetings focused on what can be learned from the situation in Ferguson. When any part of the American family does not feel like it is being treated fairly, uh, that's a problem for all of us. America continues to react to the Ferguson grand jury decision to not indict white police officer Darren Wilson and the fatal shooting of unarmed black teenager Michael Brown. In response, President Obama is calling for a three-year, $263 million U.S. dollar spending package to reform policing in the U.S. This package would include expanded police training programs with $75 million set aside to buy 50,000 body cameras for police officers. The president is also setting up a special task force chaired by a police commissioner and a university professor. They are going to co-chair a task force that is not only going to reach out and listen to law enforcement, community activists, other stakeholders, but is going to report to me specifically in 90 days with concrete recommendations, including best practices for uh, communities where law enforcement and, and uh, neighborhoods are working well together. Those at the meeting said the president seemed serious about bridging deeply rooted divisions. 
The NFL said Monday that it will not punish the St. Louis Rams players who on Sunday walked onto the field with their hands raised, mimicking those who protested the Michael Brown shooting with hands up, don't shoot gestures. The St. Louis Police Officers Association said the gesture was, quote, tasteless, offensive, and inflammatory, and it demanded an apology. Lee Jun, Arirang News. In other news, leading up to its big Christmas Day release, the producers of the movie The Interview say their system was hacked, leaving the film and three others not yet released leaked online. There is speculation that North Korea may be behind this cyber attack as the interview revolves around a plot to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Shin Se-min reports. You want us to kill the leader of North Korea? Yes. What? When the trailer for the Hollywood movie The Interview was released earlier this year, North Korea made it very clear they weren't happy about it. We're going to North Korea! They called the comedy, which centers around a CIA plot to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong un, a wanton act of terror, and even penned a letter to the United Nations to complain. Could they have escalated their attack on the movie through an actual cyber attack? The online networks of Sony Pictures, which produced the interview, went down last week. Employees of the company found themselves locked out of their computers, which showed the phrase hacked by GOP or the Guardians of Peace, which was claimed responsibility for the attack. It's been costly for Sony. At least five of the company's films, four of which haven't been released yet, were leaked online, costing Sony tens of millions of dollars in damages. In response, Sony said the theft of content was considered a criminal matter and that they're working to address the issue. The FBI is investigating, and many are wondering whether North Korea could have had a hand in it, with the interview set to be released on Christmas Day in the U.S. The North has so far refused to deny any involvement. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Global oil prices, after being on a downward spiral on recent months, posted their biggest daily gains since 2012. This rebound comes amid concerns that oil prices may have started to hurt U.S. shale gas production. Our Hwang Ji-hae has the details. U.S. oil rebounded from a five-year low, rising more than 4 percent on Monday. Crude finished up nearly $3, or 4.3 percent, at $69 per barrel. That marks the largest daily gain since August 2012. The benchmark Brent crude also jumped roughly 3.5 percent to finish at $72.54 per barrel, its biggest one-day gain in two years. The rise in international oil prices comes as investors look for a bottom price after OPEC decided not to trim production last week. U.S. and Brent crude have dropped for five straight months, the longest downward spiral since the 2008 financial crisis. The prices have lost 40 percent compared to their peak in June. But new data also shows that the market is rising back up as the U.S. shale oil industry responds to the tumbling oil prices. In late Monday afternoon trading on Wall Street, shares of shale energy companies extended their losing streak for a second consecutive session, dropping around 5 percent. OPEC's dominance in the oil market has been under threat in the face of growing output from Russia and shale oil production in the U.S. Hwang Ji, Arirang News. Hmm. Whatever the causes and consequences, though, there are industries benefiting from the falling oil prices, and one of them is Korea's airline industry. It had a slow start to the year, but coupled with other factors, airline officials are breathing a sigh of relief for now. Kim min -ji explains. Tumbling oil prices and the rise of direct purchasing from overseas could give Korea's struggling airline industry the shot in the arm it needs. The decline in crude prices has led to an overall reduction in cost for airlines, which means they are able to entice customers with cheaper fares and cut rates for cargo deliveries. Korean Air, the nation's number one carrier, says it has saved nearly 120 million U.S. dollars this year thanks to the drop in oil prices. 
Jet fuel on the Singapore market was selling at $126 a barrel early this year, but its value was plunged by around a third to $84 as of Monday. Korea's low-cost carriers have also been benefiting as fuel expenses account for 45 percent of their overall operating costs. Falling oil prices also means lower fuel surcharges, which in turn means more passengers and more cargo. According to Korea's transport ministry, nearly 7.5 million passengers took flights in, out and around Korea in October. That's more than 15 percent higher than the same month last year. Cargo volume also jumped 5 percent over the same period. And with increased shipments due to the shopping holiday known as Black Friday, Korean Air has deployed an additional 26 cargo planes. However, industry watchers warn that oil prices and exchange rates can quickly turn on their head, especially given the ongoing uncertainties in some advanced economies. Kim min -ji, Arirang News. In the year 2012 for Korea, was added to record high. All of the day's important events, events close to home and around the world. Join Na Hyung Kyung, live from Seoul. Shopping market thinks the true meaning of creation shines through. A plenary session at the National Assembly was scheduled for 2 p.m. That's about 10 minutes ago, but it has been delayed to later in the afternoon. That's because although rival party lawmakers have met eye to eye on the big picture for next year's budget bill, they still have some details to hash out. Jim young -gil has more. Having narrowed their differences on a number of issues, Korea's two main rival parties have agreed to pass next year's 340 billion U.S. dollar budget at Tuesday's plenary session. The ruling Henry Party and opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy have agreed to allocate some 85 million dollars for President Park Geun-hye's vision of a creative economy. They agreed to subsidize a free childcare program using the education ministry's budget and to scale back on corporate tax reductions. They've also accepted the government's proposal to increase cigarette prices by an average of $1.80 per pack starting next year. However, the parties are still at loggerheads over tax-related bills attached to the 2015 budget. The ruling's Henry Party is calling for tax breaks for companies that increase investments, wages and dividend payments instead of sitting on piles of cash reserves. The move is in line with the government policies aimed at fueling domestic consumption. But the opposition party says unnecessary tax cuts are being given to local companies. If an agreement isn't reached on the tax-related issues, the two parties plan to vote on them separately as auxiliary bills. Regardless of that outcome, the National Assembly is set to pass next year's budget Tuesday. If and when they do, it will mark the first time they've passed a budget by the legal deadline in 12 years. Jim young Arirang News. Seoul and Washington are in the final stages of revising a civilian nuclear cooperation deal, but it's unclear if an agreement will be reached before the end of the year. Negotiations on the revision have been ongoing for more than four years over the Nuclear Energy Pact, which dates back to 1974. It bans Seoul from enriching uranium or reprocessing spent fuel, but Seoul has asked that those restrictions be lifted, much in the same way Japan has been allowed to undertake such procedures. Washington remains reluctant to give Korea the OK due to proliferation concerns. South Korea has said it wants an agreement reached by the year's end to allow enough time for legislative approval and other procedures. Now, the, the pact was scheduled to expire last March but was pushed back to March 2016 after the two countries failed to come to an agreement. Now, earlier this year, the U.S. state of Virginia passed and signed into law a bill requiring school textbooks there to refer to the body of water between Korea and Japan as both the Korean name East Sea and Japanese name Sea of Japan. Delegate Mark Kim helped lead the historic change, and Arirang's Hwang Sung Hee had a chance to sit down, sit down with him. Take a look. 
Americans. When they saw that name designated in a way that brings back those historic inaccuracies, they realized that the best thing that they could do is ask for a redress of this body here. He led the efforts to let the students in the U.S. state of Virginia know that the body of water between Korea and Japan is not only known as the Sea of Japan, but also the East Sea. Despite criticisms that a global issue had waded into local politics and into school textbooks, Virginia House District Delegate Mark Keem said the bill was a domestic issue. Korea and U.S. is uh, building and in increasing our trade opportunities. If we have Virginia kids growing up and uh, possibly having a job that allows them to travel to Korea, we want them to understand there are some disputes. We don't want them walking in blindly and finding out that they are taught one version when they're dealing with uh, Korean business people. The bill, which was passed and signed into law earlier this year, was a small victory for Korea in a centuries-old feud with Japan. Kim does not plan to introduce more history-related bills, but says a similar campaign can always be replicated. So many issues that we deal with in America, we need Korean-American voices there, and right now that's not being heard. So I'm hoping that this experience of uh, passing the EC bill will give them that motivation and a roadmap to say, this is exactly what we want to do. We want to go to our government and redress our grievances with them the way the Constitution promises it. The Korean community is growing. I think its number is somewhere around 2 million. How can we get a more prominent presence in the U.S.? We don't have anybody in Congress that's advocating for peace reunification, hostility to be withdrawn in North Korea, human rights issues that are happening. Nobody who's of our background speaking on those issues in Washington, D.C. So I think unless and until we have Korean Americans that are affecting our policies at the national level, I don't think we can say that we're quite there yet. Hwang sang Arirang News. And shifting gears, women in Korea are less likely to be in work than women in other developed countries due to the difficulty achieving the right balance between their work and private life. Now, this problem has long been recognized and there are efforts to turn the tide. Kwon Soa has the story. We had a report about how the average Korean woman is almost forced to choose between her career. While more women are entering the workforce here in Korea, the glass ceiling certainly remains. Lack of economic participation by women in Korea. The problems Korean women face in the world of work seem to hit the headlines on almost a daily basis. Experts say that while women have the education and skills to flourish in the labor market, societal issues and family circumstances often stand in their way. As women in Korea are expected to outnumber men next year for the first time ever, domestic and international leaders are emphasizing now more than ever the importance of raising the labor participation rate of women. This was stressed at a conference on Monday, where international heads said Korea's job market needs to become more flexible towards women, referring to the country's long working hours and difficulties faced by those returning from maternity leave. They, however, said it's a good thing that the Korean government is very committed to the issue. The government has been developing diverse policies to support women to maintain their career while keeping work-life balance. One of these core policies is the family-friendly cooperation certification. That policy gives incentives to family-friendly companies, making more quality part-time positions available and providing assistance to female re-employment support centers were also mentioned. International leaders say the Korean government's goal of raising the female labor participation rate to 70 percent in 2017 from the current 55 percent is ambitious but attainable. Uh, the country has extremely highly educated uh, pool of educated women, which is a very good baseline to start. Secondly, it has very clear policies, not only policies, but plans how to get there. Uh, and I think now it's just a matter of implementation. Kwon Soa, Arirang News.
All right, so I know for a fact that there are those of you who think art galleries are rather boring places to be, but what we are about to show you might change that perception of yours. For that, we are joined in the studio by our Im Yoon Hee, as always. Good afternoon. You, you better Good have afternoon. a strong story today. <laughs> right, so today I have some fun exhibitions, but one of them includes a rather what for many will be a very new art gallery experience. Now, there are a few other exhibitions worth checking out here in Seoul. Take a look. From the outside, this looks like just another trendy club in Seoul. But take a step inside, and you'll find yourself immersed in a rich art experience. The Jean Gallery is now home to a trendy new work of art, inspired by, and some actually created by, the leader of pop art, Andy Warhol. Some of Warhol's most recognizable creations have been reinvented, from paintings to multimedia art, with fun pieces decorating the walls. Lights and a couple cocktails in hand, it's a new way to enjoy some of Seoul's most eye-catching works of art. Linda was a fantastic photographer, and I hope that in this exhibition you'll be able to see many aspects of her work, of her great work. The legendary Paul McCartney of the Beatles isn't the only artist in the family. His former wife, Linda McCartney, who passed away in 1998, was one of the most well-recognized photographers of the 20th century. She captured some of the most famous musicians of the 60s and 70s, rock and roll legends, including her husband at the time. She had access to places most photographers are kept out of, and she documented their lives through over 200 photos in this collection. Korean artist Nam Kyung Min has also opened a solo exhibition, with work that echoes the famous Korean traditional painter Kim Hong Do, known by many as Tan Won. He was a key figure in his day with his new style of paintings and now artist Nam takes a contemporary painting approach to the traditional. Hmm. Paul McCartney is so popular all over right. the world and Linda McCartney also seems to have veered away from the tradition as well. So Right, so actually uh, Linda McCartney is known as the first female to be, her work was the first uh, to be covered on the cover of the uh, Rolling Stones magazine. So that's a huge feat for a female photographer, mm -hmm. especially at that time. Uh, but she really had a unique access to musicians and really an inside look at her life and Paul's life as well. And so she was known for very raw, candid photos that kind of uh, had a lot of emotion whereas mm. other photographers are focusing on technique so she really became popular for these candid beautiful just li look into life photos mm -hmm. so let's go back to the first exhibition that we had yes. Andy Warhol I mean yes. we don't even have to explain who he is mm -hmm. right right so an iconic artist uh, with some beautiful work now this gallery is themed around his a uh, very well known the absolute vodka work that he created in uh, 1986 so he actually did a collaboration with absolute vodka and created an Andy Warhol edition vodka bottle and so that's actually available there but um, I have heard that on weekends the cocktails there are free of charge hmm. so you can enjoy some beautiful work and some delicious cocktails yeah it did not look like a gallery at all to me it looked right. like a bar right so it is a very new different type of art experience for many to enjoy so okay, it's definitely thank where you. I'll be this weekend Thank you very much, Yun Hee, and we know where uh, we will be this weekend. Exactly, see you <laughs> there. All right, thank you very much. My pleasure. Cool weather continues. I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather update. The temperature has dropped below zero degrees across the country, and the current temperature in Seoul is at minus six degrees, but it feels more like minus 13 due to the wind chill. Now, snow continues to fall in Cholado and Chungcheongdo provinces, while there are heavy snow warnings and advisories in effect throughout both Cholado provinces. Now, these regions are expected to get up to 10 more centimeters of snow through tomorrow while the surrounding areas will get between 1 and 5. Now besides the cold and the snow, now we are also dealing with elevated yellow dust levels. Now these prob the problem in uh, these currently focused in the central region but will expand to the southern regions later this afternoon.
Now to our readings for today. So it will peak at zero degrees this afternoon. Meanwhile, the southern cities such as Gwangju and Busan will top to two and five degrees. Now moving over to other regions such as Jeju Island, we'll get up to six while Tokyo hits zero degrees, while Mount Kengang will be way below at minus 13. Well, that's all for now. I'm Michelle Park and have a wonderful day. And that's it from us at this hour. From me and the rest of the team, thanks for staying with us. More news coming up at 4 p.m. Korea time.